Hey folks, Nick Corbertson here, and today we're making a drum pad app for iOS using AudioKit and a hundred lines of code. A hundred lines of code. Let's get started. All right, so let's start out by deleting all this garbage, and then we can import the AudioKit Swift package. To do this, you can write import AudioKit, and if you've imported it previously, you can click this little stop sign to add the package. But if this is your first time adding AudioKit, well, welcome. You'll wanna go up to File, Add Packages, and type in the package URL. By the way, I'll post a link to the project on GitHub that includes any changes to the code. I'll also mention it in the top comment. AudioKit is still in active development, so things are changing all the time, and this way you can stay up to date in the future. Hello, future people. Now we'll create a drum class for our view to talk to. We'll start with adding two variables, one for our audio engine and another for the Apple sampler instrument. AudioKit has two samplers. One is the Apple sampler that uses EXS files and the Dunn sampler that uses SFCs. In our init method that is called when the class is created, we'll connect the instrument to our engine's output and start the engine. Typically starting the engine has some error handling, but you can skip all that with just adding a question mark. Sacrifices must be made to keep this under 100 lines. Start your engines, maybe? Next, we'll add in a load instrument method to load our EXS instrument into AudioKit, and this has all the air handling stuff in place. We'll probably be removing all that later. Spoilers. The starting EXS instrument we're using comes from the AudioKit cookbook, but you'll want to make your own. That's kind of the reason for making a drum pad app in the first place, is so that you can get your sounds into an app and get that app into people's hands. Then get a pool filled with gold coins like Scrooge McDuck. All right, so we've added our sounds and EXS to the proper places, and now we can call load instrument from our init method. Now down in our Swift UI view, we can add a connection to this drum class that we'll call conductor. Let's replace this body of text with a rounded rectangle button. Now when the button is tapped, it will play a MIDI note from the instrument in our conductor class. Yikers. It's playing a note every frame, which we don't want. So what we're gonna do is we'll set up a Boolean to tell us if the note is being pressed or not. We'll set it to true when the note is being pressed and set it to false when the touch ends. Now that we have one pad, we can copy it, make an H stack and paste in its little buddy. Now obviously copying pasting like this would be quite lengthy. So instead of doing that, we're gonna build our layout in a for each loop. So with this, we'll have four buttons and we'll apply the offset integer value to our MIDI note numbers. Now we'll make a nested for loop so that we can have four vertical rows. This is a standard MPC drum pad style layout. Then we do a little math to get the offset integer to increase the MIDI number properly and we'll throw those all into a V stack. And here's our app running in the simulator. This sampler instrument only has five notes, but I'll add a different instrument at the end of the video to fill up all the paths. A little Xcode trick is that you can highlight your document's text with Command A and search for indent in the help menu to find the re-indent option. Much more better. All right, while this does work, let's move the pad into its own separate view to increase SwiftUI's efficiency. It's a long story, but you want to construct your views outside of your main SwiftUI view, or else maybe you'll be recreating those views anytime a state object is updated. That was actually a very short story. A good way to test this is by putting a breakpoint in your code to see where the view is being constructed. So here I've plonked in a simple drum view and we can run the preview to see it all loading. All right, so let's add our math back in and print off that ID to see if it's counting properly. Next, I'll add our conductor as an environment object. And I've got to give a huge shout out here to Evan at Aura Audio. He made a tutorial recently making a MIDI controller using AudioKit and Swift Playgrounds. That's where I learned about passing the conductor between views and the ID stuff. Basically, the drum pad construction came entirely from his video, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. He does a great job of explaining why things do, how, what do I do. All right, so now we have our drum pad in its own view, and we need to make that playing Boolean into an array so that we can play multiple notes at one time. And we can also put the MIDI note values into an array so that we can set them in whatever order we like. So we'll set our MIDI note number to our conductor's notes ID, and that's the drum pad part done. Now to add some visual interest, we'll throw the whole thing into a Z stack and add a radial gradient to the background. We'll also give the buttons a color with a 0.5 opacity and we'll move it all the way up to a full opacity, totally opaque, when the note is pressed. And this will all look much better after we go to info.plist and we set the app's appearance to dark. Ah. Now we'll add some text by making a names array and we can apply those to an overlay on our drum pads. 
Next, we'll add some padding to our view, re-indent, and hey presto, that looks like a drum app. So now we know how to get a drum pad working with a spiffy little UI using AudioKit in about 65 lines of code. But what about the other 35 lines? Well, that's where we're going to do the not sexy part of being a good iOS citizen. Chances are, if you're going to make your app support MIDI in the future, you'll need to turn on background audio capabilities in your info.p list. But you don't want the audio engine running if the user decides to turn off their background mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a scene phase variable, and it is called when the app becomes active or moves in the background. There we can reload our instrument and start the engine back up. Note that anytime you restart the audio engine while using the Apple sampler, you'll need to reload the instruments too. One thing that I didn't include in the 100 lines is I set up the audio session in the app delegate to set the category to playback. This will allow the audio to play even if the mute switch is on. And if you are going to use background audio for MIDI in the future, here's where you can set that up, but I'm just going to leave it off for now. Next, we'll add a notification to observe when changes to the headphones are plugged in or removed. This also sometimes requires starting the engine and loading the instrument. To make things easier, let's move this reloading code into its own method. All right, so we're still under 100 lines, but we need to add another notification for whenever users receive phone calls. We once again need to stop and start the engine and reload the instruments. In the next 100 lines of code example, I'm going to leave this part out because I think it's kind of boring and it only handles some edge cases, but it is a very important step in releasing a bug-free app, or at least an app with less bugs. All right, we are 15 lines over our arbitrary but necessary limit. Let's see where we can save some space. I'll move these dispatch queue things into the reload method. I'll also remove some constants. Uh... Aha, here is our load instrument method. Let's remove the error handling here. So now we're telling the app to try maybe loading an instrument at a path that must exist or else the app will crash. And now we'll scroll down. Sweet. 100 lines on the money. Okay, well, all right, now I'm gonna grab my acoustic guitar. All right, you know that kind of music whenever people are like banging on their guitar and like uh, Andy McKee? I'm gonna make an Andy McKee style drum pad, only the guitar is the drums. All right, so I'm gonna go into Logic, I'm gonna record my guitar, I'm gonna turn it into an EXS instrument, I'm gonna drag it into our app, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've recorded the sounds, I've used Logic Sampler to create an EXS instrument. I made a separate video on how to make EXS instruments for iOS apps, if you wanna check that out. But now the sounds are in the app, and this is being recorded from my iPad. And here it is, our 100 line drum pad example. Hey folks, thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Come say howdy down in the comments. Keep an eye out for the next one where I'll be making a sequencer and a hundred lines of code. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. A hundred lines of code.